The site is fairly secluded in that we're in a, a rural area. Um, I think we're about six miles from Luss, which is the smallest kind of small village um, nearby. And the site is on quite a steep hillside with no real infrastructure at all. We've obviously got that amazing view over Loch Lomond, but there's absolutely no electricity. There wasn't even vehicular access either. There was no kind of fuel or potable drinking supply either. The electricity came from a supply which was actually running up the hillside, um, so that was brought down onto the site. The fuel was brought in through a ground source heat pump and we actually originally looked to do that as a horizontal loop system which would have ran next to the, the drive up to the, the house. But when we realised that we were going to be doing a borehole for the drinking water supply, we actually decided to then do a vertical borehole system. So the borehole for the drinking water supply and the ground source heat pump are, are merged effectively to, to use the same borehole for the two purposes. The borehole was done quite early because it's also important as well for the construction process to have a supply of water on site, um, which is a bit of worry when you're starting up, you know, if there's to be a fire on site or anything like that. The contractor initially had to bring in big bowsers of water so that we had that access there. But so the sooner we got the borehole up and running, the better. So we did do that quite early on. The interesting thing about it was trying to find the water supply. When you think how close we are, to the loch, um, I think it's 180 metres. It's, when you consider, I think we are about 40 metres above water level, but we're down at 180. As part of the borehole, we had to actually bring a water diviner to the site, um, <laughs> which the person who was doing the borehole insisted on having. Um, they wouldn't commit to, to where the borehole should go without a water diviner coming to site and walking about with us. <laughs> The spring was a potential option for drinking water. The house at the bottom of the hill uses that for their drinking water supply. So that was always a backup for us. If we couldn't get the borehole to work for a drinking water supply, we always had the option of, of using the, the spring, but it was never going to be that reliable. Certainly in the hot summer we've had, which is quite unusual around here, um, you know, that could potentially dry up and it was never going to be the best option. The house has got its own septic tank, which is within the plot. Um, but again, just, you know, make sure you've got enough space to accommodate that within your plot as well. And the planners will be interested in where that's located and how visible it's going to be. Just to think through all the things that you're going to need in terms of your electricity, your fuel, your water supply, your drainage arrangements and how you're going to bring that into sight. Are there possibilities nearby of how you can do it? Look into all the different options, whether it's a ground source heat pump or biomass or anything that you might think of doing in terms of renewables to get fuel in. But allow for that in your budget. In this building in particular, you know, the building itself is almost the least of the project in a way that we had to do so much to even make this site a possibility. So be aware of what you need to bring in and also assign costs very early in your budget for, for doing that.